do not make this my most popular video because editor note as I was finally finishing this video after weeks of working the second trailer dropped and kind of destroys this theory completely so the point of this theory is to be like the dumbest theory you've ever heard because I have a FNAF movie theory so dumb you will not like it even if you like this video which if you do thank you so then why make this video what do you get out of it Two things. One, perhaps I say something so dumb that it's smart enough to help one of you figure something out about the movie that no one else has thought of yet. A stepping stone to your shining hope. And two, you get someone to laugh at. You might come up with a silly idea, but at least it won't be as bad as this video again after the second trailer absolutely destroys everything that I'm about to say. But the red eyes. Within 24 hours of that trailer dropping, we saw amazing edits of the eyes as their more hollow or spooky or downright creepy appearance. But what if the red eyes were on purpose and hear me out? Outside of the movie itself, yes, it's probably to convey to the general audience that the animatronics are bad. Where we may have been introduced to FNAF for years, or watched someone like Markiplier play through countless games with lore, this movie may only be like 90 minutes or so long and has to convey all of that information quickly. We get that. It's like how I love the Sonic franchise most of my life, and the two live action movies have actually been really great, but there are definitely ideas that were made for a general audience that are not from the games or comics. Sometimes movies will draw on all different canons at the same time, and create what is called a composite version of a character or characters that take elements from like all backgrounds ever made of a character. So if I take a friend who knows nothing about Sonic Adventure 2 to see Sonic 3 when it comes out that has Shadow in it, uh, the movie needs to be good for me, sure, but also good for them too. So outside of the movie, this could be what we get, a composite telling of the lore in a way that covers as much as possible in a short amount of time, creating what people tend to call the movie-verse version of a character. However, inside the movie, what if the red eyes are also on purpose? To keep this theory simple, we all know that FNAF 1 and FNAF 2 exist, right? Agreed. We also know that FNAF 2 is a prequel of FNAF 1, right? Agreed. We also know the withered animatronics in FNAF 2 existed before FNAF 2 to be withered to begin with, right? Sure. This can be confirmed by the phone guy in FNAF 2 Night 2, and quote, Uh, by now I'm sure you've noticed the older models sitting in the back room. Uh, those are from the previous location. We just use them for parts now. The idea at first was to repair them. Uh, they even started retrofitting them with some of the newer technology, but they were just so ugly, you know. The smell. In relation to the idea that the movie has to appear to a general audience, right? And it already being confirmed that Ultra Instinct Shaggy himself is playing our good old boy William Afton. And while some of the scenes we see in the trailer could be flashbacks, what if it isn't in its present day? What if the movie is about the location prior to FNAF 2 and movieverse form and Afton's creation of the original animatronics with Henry? Or they go the Avengers 2 route and instead of Ultron being a creation of Ant-Man and Iron Man, just Iron Man, so no Henry and just Afton. Only Afton's being the story of this movie is an idea that's already floating around that the movie focuses on the Afton family, like the girl in the ball pit possibly being his daughter, the security guard being Michael, etc. So the red eyes we see in the trailer could be a product of Afton's programming when dealing with kids, similar to how to in sister location the Funtime animatronics had capabilities to abduct children in them. So the red eyes could have nothing to do with the animatronics being possessed, but just actually dangerous nonetheless. And if it's a mix of canon stories to also tie in why Withered Bonnie's eyes are red under the faceplate, much like that face saw blade thing we see in the first trailer too. In short, this movie might be a retelling of multiple, usually separate events all at once because, well, movie. Now yes, to play devil's advocate with myself, which is wild, let's be real, the devil doesn't need advocating, but the smell, okay, could be the kids already dead inside the suits. That was the thing about FNAF 1 that was so interesting and vague is that we could never quite tell if the animatronics were machine or already possessed. But what if, in my source here that I'm making up on the spot and should probably Google this, night 6 of FNAF 2's phone call is when we say those five kids were lured in the back by Afton as Spring Golden Bonnie Buddy, our good old friend. That means these wither animatronics come from a location where A, they were around long enough to decay already, right? B, they were still advanced enough that the facial recognition system for the toy animatronics were attempted to be placed on the withered animatronics, and C, they were active before being possessed or stuff. Heck, let's play with this some more though. Destroying my own theory could literally be the fact that the animatronics in the movie trailer are clearly based on the designs from the first game. Now yes, I could counter that by saying we don't see Chica, at least in the trailer, just the uh, poster. That could be why, but no, it's probably a movie based on the first game with a plot around it other than simply returning for five nights. But I have one more piece of evidence to support my wild red eyes theory. Markiplier. He may not be in the movie. But it is not unrealistic to think that they would put a reference to the King of FNAF in the Five Nights of Freddy's movie. And what is Markiplier's color? Red. Like what? His logo. 
his hair that no one will ever let go, and his room lighting background even today. Heck, today at the point of publishing this, it's June 28th, aka his birthday. Happy birthday. He'll never see this though. But perhaps Iron Lung is not the only October movie this year Markiplier will be a part of. Aha! But I've solved the red eyes with the dumbest theory I could muster up. And now, yes, again, the second trailer dropped and kind of just confirms that it's probably about the first movie, uh, who the girl is, why she's there, etc. There's a whole plot going on. It explains that this is past the 80s and all of that stuff, too. So it blows this entire theory out of the water. So if you did enjoy this video, nonetheless, to make it this far, I appreciate it. If this video ends up as my most popular video, I guess I'll have no choice but to play through the entire FNAF series to get ready for Ruin and Helps Wanted 2. I finally got a VR headset recently, so we'll see. Our good friend Steam Shell Kid, who was mortally terrified of Helps Wanted 1, said he would play Helps Wanted 2 for like 10 minutes in VR if I played through the whole series and several fan games. So I have zero excuse not to accept if this video goes off. But I can't get the first game to work resolution-wise, so if any of you know how to resize it so my buttons are not cut off and I die for free, that would be some help wanted. But thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification, the actual subscribe button. But I don't know which video will be next. We're just going to have to wait and see. So until this time, take care and enjoy pizza responsibly. Thank you for watching. Bro, they got Corey Kenshin up in there. Let's go.